Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we're gonna to talk about Junior Bernard. Why are we gonna talk about Junior Bernard? One, because he's my favorite Western swing guitarist. Two, because he's very relatable, which is code for saying that he's very, you know, he's easy to steal from and use in a variety of other styles of music because his a lot of things he did were blues based. And three, we're gonna talk about him because he was involved um, you know, in a in a in an interesting way with the development of the Telecaster. So, yes, Junior Bernard, the old fat boy. So, put on your purple neckerchief if you if you've got it. You know, put it around your neck, whether to the left or the right or down the center, whatever uh, way moves you. And uh, we're going to talk about Junior Bernard. But first, while you're thinking about it. Uh, if you've been enjoying the show and you haven't done it yet, well, please go down in the corner and hit subscribe. Uh, if you've already subscribed, then I really appreciate you supporting the show. There's all sorts of ways. There's, uh, you know, there's super thanks down, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the kind of control bar down there. There's a, there's tip jar information. You can go to askzack.com. You can find out about friends of Ask Zach, which you get the episodes early without commercials. You get some Medium heavy D'Andrea Ask Zach personalized guitar picks. You get uh, le you know exclusive lessons that are only for the uh, friends of Ask Zach and etc. And also you can find out uh, just at askzach.com. There's also merch. So anyway, multiple ways. So all right, so let's uh, let's dive in. So Lester Bernard was born in uh, December of 1920. Hard to believe that was uh, 102 years ago. He really got going career-wise when he started working with John Wills. And so John Wills was the father of, uh, of Bob Wills. And just so we understand how the dynamics of this work, it's kind of like major league ball and minor league. So, and they kind of fed each other and people would go up in the ranks and down in the ranks. Well, Bob Wills had his dad and his brothers uh, and other family members were involved and they all had different bands. And of course, the the Zenith, you know, the highest up in the in the league you could go was playing with Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. But you would get you might get picked up playing with one of the other bands and then you get promoted up to playing with Bob Wills. And then sometimes you might get tired of Bob or Bob might get tired of you and you might get moved into one of the other bands and then you might get moved back. Just depends on how things went. Well, that's what happened with, uh, you know, Junior Bernard, who, uh, you know, got the unfortunate nickname Fat Boy. Uh, but uh, he started off playing with John Wills and then, uh, then he started playing with Bob. Uh, he played with them off and on, but what's what what he's most known for is the recorded work that he did with Bob Wills and specifically the Tiffany transcriptions. So the Tiffany transcriptions were hours and hours and hours of content that was created by uh, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys in uh, 1946, 1947. In that era, they were making all these recordings that were to be used kind of as filler for different radio stations because you have to remember that uh, radio stations were you know using a lot of live you know performances and uh, and and they were kind of in need of extra content that they could play so they made these tiffany transcriptions and they weren't officially released until into the 70s or 80s they were on a kaleidoscope or edsel if you were in in the uk and these came out as multiple volumes and it's at that point that people started really being able to appreciate Junior Bernard. Because before that, whenever someone would talk about Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, they probably would have talked first about Eldon Shamblin. And Eldon Shamblin was a fantastic guitarist who played much more in a Freddie Green style, you know, every bar, you know, you know, he would, you know, do, you know, he was doing moving bass lines and doing very much a Freddie Green style guitar playing. Now, he also played great solos and great harmony parts. And then, of course, people know of him because of the gold strat that Leo Fender gave him in 54, which I think Joe Bonamassa owns now. If it hadn't been traded off, it was kind of changing hands a lot. But back to Junior. 
So it wasn't until uh, these Tiffany transcriptions started being released that people started hearing how wonderful of a player that Junior was and how exciting his playing was. Uh, while the other guys were a little more polite, uh, Junior was very, very blues-based, and his playing was aggressive. He played hard, and he had a distorted tone. And so this is what makes him more relatable to a lot of us that didn't grow up playing swing music or playing Western swing. So all of a sudden, you have this guy with a more interesting tone, and also he's using elements that you find also in rockabilly, jump blues, you know, blues, all sorts of things, and, uh, and a tone that's a lot more approachable and relatable for a lot of us that don't just play crystal clean all the time as much as I love clean. So these Tiffany transcriptions changed everything. All, and the transcriptions are great because they were just having to create all this content. So it's very uh, high energy. It's not about being perfect. There's a lot of jams on there where, you know, all of a sudden there's a tune called Fat Boy Rag and Bernard Blues that both feature Junior. And, uh, you know, we don't know how much of that was just made up on the spot because it's like, okay, uh, you know, roll, roll the tape and we're going to, you know, just play something. So uh, they're, they're very, very, very cool recordings. Uh, I became aware of Junior through uh, Guitar Player Magazine, did an article on him in the early 80s, and it had uh, suggested listening, you know, but the problem was is that none of those recordings were easily available at the record stores that I had access to in, in South Texas. So it wasn't until much later in 1990 and 91 that Guitar Player Magazine took on this undertaking of partnering with Rhino Records, and they released this whole series of albums that were called Legends of Guitar, and they had Country Volume 1 and 2, uh, Blues Volume 1 and 2, they had Rock the 50s 1 and 2, on and on. They had Jazz and Classical and on and on. Um, and these, I highly recommend that you uh, track these down. Uh, they will give you an amazing overview of uh, early earlier country guitar styles, uh, specifically things before around 1983 or so. And uh, that's where I heard Junior Bernard. So here, here it is. This is volume two. It has them doing Bernard Blues. Also on here, there's everything from Clarence White to Merle Travis, Roy Clark, Jerry Reed, Buddy Emmons, Jimmy Bryant, Albert Lee, Tony Rice, Chet Atkins, on and on, Jimmy Colvard, all sorts of great players on these. And I'm going to do a whole episode on, on these because the guitar player really did an amazing job on this. Then later on, I, uh, of course, became aware of the Tiffany transcriptions because that's what that, that cut is from. And then I started picking up, um, picking some of these up. So, you know, here's one and, and here's another. They, they have great artwork. And they also have uh, all the, the session personnel is listed. So you know specifically who's playing on it, whether it is, um, you know, Junior or Eldon Shamblin, or, you know, if that's Tiny Moore playing electric mandolin, which, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So those are great. Now, I've put together a Spotify playlist that has all sorts of stuff from the Tiffany transcriptions, and that's going to be in, in the link below. All right. So let's talk about his playing and what was so cool about it. Well, I did my best to kind of play uh, some junior isms in the uh, in the intro, and so you have all sorts of things. So you have kind of the Texas Oklahoma swing style, which of course I guess the greatest exponent of that would be like Charlie Christian, and you have things like the first thing I played, you know, the other. And then you have the double stops. mix of swing lines. Then you have these triple stops and double stops, you know. And then you have these kind of proto rockabilly things and these rakes and things. That you have. 
and also these uh, descending, you know, kind of half step above things. Um, and here are some more, you know, kind of double stop things that you hear a lot in, uh, you know, in R&B music and blues, you have like, uh, like on, on Fat Boy Rag, it starts off with that double stopping kind of thing. And then you have this. On and on. Also, you would do some other single note line kind of things. Or, you know, maybe like some hitting some lines that were, you know, bass notes and then treble notes up high, you know, kind of like the. And the other kind of climbing things. So the point of me playing that is just to show, okay, here are all these elements that are in his playing that are usable all over all sorts of other styles. So that's the reason why you need to listen to Junior Bernard is just about everything he does can be stolen and used in other st styles of roots music. So yeah, so steal away, steal away. And so I hope that Junior Bernard will kind of be a gateway drug for you and that you know by listening to these tracks that are in this uh, Spotify playlist, You'll hear that, and all of a sudden, you're going to start liking Western Swing. I know, I know, it's crazy, but uh, you might just start liking it. You might start enjoying the ahas and all the all the crazy stuff that Bob Wills does, and uh, and then you're going to hear the great uh, electric mandolin of Tiny Moore and the steel guitar of uh, you know Herb Remington and and Eldon Shamblin and everyone else. So yeah, all right. Now let's talk about the Fender connection because this is really interesting. So. Uh, in the Pinecaster book, which I have behind me, which is an amazing uh, look at early electric guitars and the uh, the history of, of Fender and the development of the Broadcaster, Telecaster, Esquire, all the all the above. Uh, in it, they take a look at uh, Junior Bernard's Epiphone Emperor. So this is a guitar that he played a lot in the Texas Playboys. There are shots of him playing a Gibson ES-150 with the Charlie Christian pickup, a Sunburst one, uh, and probably a Gibson amp um, earlier. But then he started playing this Epiphone Emperor and it had a, uh, you know, what the, sometimes they call it the Rhythm Chief, sometimes they call it a monkey on a stick, but basically it's this big chrome pickup that's on two, you know, chrome rods and it can be moved back and forth and it mounts on the side of the neck and then it mounts you know around the the tailpiece and basically you can move this pickup around well he moved it of course near the uh, the end of the neck and that's um and that's the guitar he used on a lot of the tiffany transcription stuff just like that well leo was a huge fan of bob wills and the texas playboys and he gave them you know equipment and worked on their guitars and amps and all sorts of stuff. And so he gave, um, apparently he gave a, uh, a Woody Pro to, uh, to Junior and he used that and also added a second pickup. And this is where we get Deke Dickerson and Nacho and other guys in the Pinecaster book kind of uh, lay out their claim, which I believe, that his Epiphone Emperor was kind of the test mule of the Telecaster. So the Emperor has a 25 and a half inch scale length. And of course it has uh, this, you know, big chrome pickup up here that was the, the Rhythm Chief thing. And then of course they added a, another pickup that was a steel guitar pickup that actually was one of those that wraps around that since, you know, that, the, that covers the strings on top and bottom. And then he had controls for the DeArmin pickup that were what came with it that were nearby. But then it had what looked like a little chrome plate, kind of like a Telecaster, shortened up here, and it had two knobs very similar to these. So it's their take, and, and, and I'm totally on board with this, is that um, Leo saw this guitar that one of his you know, heroes was playing, or one of the, the, his favorite band's guitar player was using, and that became kind of his, his first kind of inspiration as far as, 
you know, what are some of the features the guitar should have and what were some of the things that were tested out on that and then went on to other guitars. So, yeah, so Junior Bernard's Epiphone Emperor was an influence and a, and a test bed, you know, for the Telecaster. Uh, other gear that he used, you know, well, I should add this, the pickups had their own outputs. So the, the guitar had two output jacks down here. So one was for the Fender pickup, the steel guitar pickup, the wraparound pickup, and the other one was for the DeArmond Rhythm Chief. And, uh, and apparently he also used a volume control. I mean, not a volume control, a volume pedal. So I'm guessing he used the volume pedal just on one amp, because otherwise he would have had to have two or something. So I'm guessing he had the steel guitar pickup running through a volume pedal and then into his Pro or something like that, but he used two amps uh, for his guitar so that he could get it uh, loud enough and that he could uh, kind of jack up the one amp to uh, to get solo volume. So just a fantastic player. I hope you will take the time to learn some of his licks and listen to him and really absorb it. And I hope again that it will be kind of a gateway drug to uh, Western Swing that you'll be able to, to listen to those uh, tracks with the uh, the dangle of the carrot of Junior Bernard's solos. So, all right. So now I just wanna give uh, uh, some thanks. So, you know, of course, I've already mentioned the guitar player article and the, and the guitar player album. Um, I also need to say there are a bunch of guys have written great things. Uh, Deke Dickerson, uh, videos that I've watched. Tommy Harkenrider has done some really cool things. So uh, I've, you know, I have some links in the description to different different videos that I watched that were helpful in uh, in me, you know, picking up some, uh, uh, you know, Junior Bernard, you know, playing tricks and such. So thanks to them. All right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.